Ah, there it is, red light time. Oh, I love me some red light time. Red light time means, hey, we get to start talking about uh, some more great, more great stuff, more great topics. Hey, welcome back. Hey, thank you for being a part of this. Uh, A&P students, Crowder, uh, A&P students, uh, Nevada High School, hey, welcome. Hey, thanks for being here. As always, man, thank you for uh, letting me be a part of your educational journey. Man, I, I appreciate it, love it, appreciate you guys, love you guys. I mean, it's a, it's just a great time, great classes, both of you. Uh, hey, I just enjoy this. Hey, hope everything's going well with you. Halloween weekend, um, you know, it's it's a Sunday morning now, but I hope you had a great time last night. Uh, whether you were a person who uh, went out, uh, did some stuff, or whether you were a person who um, had a little one of your own and uh, you went out and did some of that stuff. Man, I do remember those good times. Uh, back to my own childhood and, and, and taking Patrick and Leah out and and being a part of all that. So, uh, man, it's great. It's great times. Great time. But it was a decent evening for it. I mean, it might got a little cool. Uh, after dark, I don't know. I was, I was inside of my couch uh, enjoying myself with a nice, uh, oh, man. Man, we had a great night last night, uh, food-wise, man. Cooked some ribeyes up, baked potato, loaded baked potato, uh, watching some watching some football and enjoying all of that. Uh, some great great games last night. Man, it's rough being an LSU fan. I know it. Uh, that's, that's where I was born. I'm an Oklahoma fan, as you guys know, but uh, LSU, that's kind of always in my uh, back of my mind. Uh, cheer for those. That's that's where I was born. Of course, I was only I was only there for a few months. Uh, I don't know, maybe tell this story. But if you ever want to hear the story, just uh, just ask me. But I was kind of, I was kind of timed. Uh, my dad was in the Air Force, and uh, we lived on a, well, they lived on a base at the time. And my uh, coming into this world was kind of timed uh, with his uh, his release and getting back into the civilian civilian world. So I was only there a few few months according to the stories but uh, anyway england air force base in uh, louisiana which is no longer there so uh i mean it's no longer open i shouldn't say i'm sure there's something still there but anyway that's enough about me let's talk about you hey good stuff today uh what we're going to talk about today is uh uh pretty important stuff we're talking muscles Okay, that's our that's our overwhelming overwhelming overall theme. Uh, you may think overwhelming, I don't know, but that's our uh, that's our topic, and uh, it's either going to be a two parter. Yeah, I love me some two parters, and uh, part one is kind of going to kind of be the how, and then uh, part two will be the why or when that kind of stuff. But uh, today we're going to talk a little bit of background information, and then talk about how muscles. Uh, are the process that muscles go through to fire, to, to act, to get something done, whether it's a leg muscle, arm muscle. And then next video, we'll talk about the specific kind of uh, videos. Uh, hang on for a second. I had turned off the heater. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but I turned off the my little heater in here. Uh, as I mentioned before, this this is a this office here, that wall right over there. That's the north facing wall, and so it's kind of, it's a little bit cooler than the rest of the house. And uh, I don't like to run it because I'm afraid of a you can hear it. It's a little drone, little little sound. But uh, so I turned off, thinking it or hoping that uh, with some sleeves that I would be able to stay warm enough. But I was wrong about that. So we're going to turn it back on. And uh, hate for you to see me start shivering and uh, everything. So. We turned it back on. So, hey, talking about muscles. Oh, shivering. Hey, see how I did that? Yeah. Uh, so, muscles. And uh, so, let's get into it. Let's get going. And, uh, again, we're shooting for that 45-hour range. And then the second one. second one probably be a little bit shorter uh, with everything. But, hey, let's get started as always. Got my notes here ready to go. It's pre-lunch, so as you know my routine, I got my water here. Had to make sure I filled it up yesterday when I made me a bio video. 
I didn't I didn't do that. I didn't fill it up before I started, and I ran out. Yeah, that was some dry, some dry moments after when that uh, when that uh, happened. Some sadness there, but uh, I made sure I had me a nice, nice full glass there. And uh, so with that, hey, we got everything we need. So let's get started. Nice dramatic pause there, which is a strong teacher move. So hey, we're this is uh, you can see here by this. Where's my little peanut? What what color are we gonna use for mussels? We're gonna use red, kind of a red meat kind of a thing. Might as well, let's do it. As you can see here, uh, when that says figure 12, that means it's from chapter 12, which is the chapter over nervous tissue, uh, which uh, high school students, uh, uh, as far as uh, us, will not get to, uh, but, um, the Crowder, the Crowder students, you'll you'll go through this in A and P too. But this chapter, and one, I kind of have to ask somebody. I don't know why we teach this chapter prior to uh, nervous tissue because a lot of what goes on we're going to talk about today. You kind of got to know what's happening with the with the neurons. Uh, it's pretty. It's pretty heavily laden with neuron talk and so we're just going to go briefly over uh, what happens uh, when neurons uh, create an action uh, somewhere uh, because you have to kind of know that to understand what we're going to talk about today so uh, this obviously is a neuron okay and so just some some basic information and, and maybe you have a little bit of background information on neurons but it all starts with the dendrites Okay, these are the dendrites. These are the things that receive the messages from a previous neuron. So there's a neuron up here, and these dendrites, uh, as the as it goes through all this stuff, uh, these synaptic knobs in here, those they're going to connect to a dendrite of the next neuron. Uh, but the idea of an axon, so you've got your somatic body here, and you've got your nucleus in here. Uh, but what happens when a message comes in? On these dendrites, it travels down and uh, travels across the somatic. And when it gets into there, what's known as the, the trigger zone, okay, it fires an action potential. And when you talk about that in Chapter 12, that's a pretty heavy concept. And you're going to get a little bit here today because we it's just part of this chapter. So, again, I'm not sure why we teach 11 before 12 because um, we shouldn't. But, you know, that's a whole different topic, and that's a, not my call to make. But I am going to ask, though. So the idea of this action potential, okay, then it fires this the stimulus, uh, and based on what needs to happen, okay, um, the message is fired, and when it gets down to these synaptic cleft, synaptic knobs or the synaptic cleft is what we're going to talk about, uh, based on what needs to happen, different neurotransmitters are released and that's how the brain communicates uh, to whatever it's gonna whatever the message is traveling to uh, from this point it can go anywhere in the body it can go to the hypothalamus it can go to an organ it can go to a muscle and that's what we're going to talk about to a muscle but at this point in time whatever needs to happen a particular neurotransmitter would be released and that's how the message gets communicated to wherever it's going. Okay, but, but we're gonna, what we're going to talk about is this. Just there's only one action, and that's just contracting the muscle and making it work. So the neurotransmitters that we're going to see is just one type, and so that will uh, ease that because there are hundreds of different types. And when you go through A and P two, it's a pretty big list that you need to know. Uh, based on, you know, basically this neurotransmitter creates this action kind of a thing. Um, but it's the idea of this action potential. Uh, the message signal travels down. Uh, the whole idea of these myelin sheaths and the swan cells. And again, you'll learn all that. Uh, but more importantly, I'm going to close this down to this, this picture here. And again, uh, figure 12. So this is again, it's from chapter 12, but this is Because uh, you're going to see this and so we need to talk about 
of what actually happens when the when the signal gets to um, the uh, wherever it's going, whatever whenever it gets to wherever it's going, and it needs to tell that in this case the muscle what needs to happen. Uh, uh, this is this is kind of the process that it goes through uh, when the synaptic cleft uh, is just at rest. Okay, where it's got an energy level. And let me just draw a little scale here. I'm just going to draw, and this is this is energy levels. I'm going to have to put my numbers on the other side. That's supposed to be an E. And we're going to start it down here. This is negative 90. And the unit, you can see the unit here, but, that, but that's not important what we're doing. The way to think about this is, is just like your bank account. Okay. And these ions, the sodium and the potassium, that's going to be money into the bank account. So... It's not a great metaphor, but uh, if you want to pretend that your bank account is at negative 90, okay, that negative 90 is where the synaptic cleft, where it's resting, that's kind of where it sets at. Okay, low energy. Okay, and when that stimulus comes in, that message comes in, it causes these two channels, the sodium channel and the potassium channel, to open up. Okay, and what, what happens then uh, sodiums, which you can, which you, let me write it over here. It's a plus. Okay, it's a plus, meaning it's lost an electron. It's an ion, it's lost an electron. Um, and so it's got more protons and electrons, and so it's a plus. And so they go pouring into, well, that increases the energy level. So if you think about the sodiums as being dollars. And if your bank account is at negative 90, but you get about 200 of these sodiums to go into, uh, it increases the, your money. And so what happens, those fire into it and until it gets about a plus. $75. So about $165 goes into your account and now you're a plus 75. Well, when that happens, then the action uh, has enough energy to pass on to the next, uh, whether it's a neuron or the next muscle uh, junction. And we'll talk about those in, in a few seconds, or in, in, a, in a few minutes. Then when it gets up to the 75 point, uh, the sodium channel opens first, these things fire into it, okay, and then once that occurs, then the potassium channel opens up and the potassiums roar out. Okay, reducing it and sending it back down to that negative 90. So it's a it's just a process to where uh, when a stimulus uh, uh, arrives from a previous neuron, this membrane activates, the sodiums roar in. Okay, and build up that energy level so then the ner then the stimulus can go to the next neuron or the next muscle junction whichever the case may be in this case well, we're going to talk about the next muscle junction then the the, uh, pot the potassium and again that's a that's a plus so it's a situation where positive ener plus energy goes in positive positive values go in uh, to increase the energy level, and then once the action is fired, then the positives go out, reducing it back to the 90s. Uh, and not only do the potassiums go out, okay, but that sodium opens up, and then they flow back out as well. And then, of course, uh, then the potassium can diffuse back in to kind of reset everything. Uh, so it's negative in here, positive out here. And it's one of those ion graded gates that we talked way back in, in uh, chapter two, chapter uh, and that kind of stuff. And this is why that chemistry chapter is so important to understand what's happening here. So that's just some decent background information, and we'll we'll in, uh, refer back 
to this scenario here because you're going to see this happen uh, in a couple of in a couple of places. Uh, so, but I just wanted you to to kind of have some basic information. So when we as we talk about this stuff, uh, you'll have a fighting chance uh, to understand. So let me erase all this because I'm going to need this space here in a little bit to throw some notes your direction. And let me close this and scoot back up here. And I'm just going to use all this area to type. And we'll be going down. And eventually we'll type deep enough to where we're going to get to that bad boy right there and talk about that. And from then, then we go through the process. All right. So again, our topic today is the process that occurs to get muscles to fire or to contract and, and uh, to create an action. So let's start with, give me a little box right here. Move it all the way up to here. We're going to move it over here because we're going to be pretty long this way as well as a bunch because we, we got quite a bit. So uh, if you need to, if you're if you're using a pen and it's low on ink, you might want to grab you a second one. Or if you're using a, a pencil of some kind and it's it's short or the lead's not much in there, then you might grab some extra because we got some. We got a pretty good pile of uh, notes to to process through. All right, introduction. Strong teacher move right there. Little uh, outline format. Uh, muscles are capable chemical energy. Oh, that ain't right. Mechanical energy, uh, and we just saw an example of that. Okay, when those potassiums and those uh, sodiums uh, do their work, okay, across that membrane, and that can allow us that stimulus to continue, and it gets into the muscles. Okay, and then that spreads throughout the muscles, causing them to contract. Then we go on from a chemical energy to mechanical energy. In other words, work is now being done. Okay. There are three types, and this will be the basis of the next uh, uh, video lecture. Three types and again, I never know which of those it, it's supposed to be, but we're going to go with that and we got skeletal. Cardiac and smooth. Okay, and uh, so skeletal is pretty easy to understand. Uh, each of these, you guys are deep enough into the uh, nursing world or, or strong enough in, in the A and P to know uh, what's going on here. But skeletal muscles, those are muscles that are attached to bone. Uh, cardiac, that's your heart, of course. And then of course the smooth muscle are, are, are all those muscles and organs that uh, you don't have to control. Anytime you see the word smooth, that means uh, involuntary. In other words, it controls itself uh, and you don't have to think about that. You know, like your bladder doing its job, uh, the kidney doing its job, uh, the liver doing its job, all that kind of stuff. You don't have to think about uh, that kind of stuff. That's what smooth muscle refers to. Now the study physiology uh, of muscles includes and this is this is the stuff that we're going to be looking at. Uh, today, I think that one is the the colon there. Uh, responsiveness. In other words, um, uh, that the fact that a chemical signal signal can come in and cause a change in not only just the 
function but the structure as well okay we're going to look at the conductivity conductivity of it in other words its ability to, to send that signal along uh, it can conduct that electrical uh, stimulus electrical message and contractility in other words its ability to contract um, to tense up to relax to tense up relax uh, the extensibility Capable of being stretched in between contractions, uh, and of course, uh, elasticity. Got to got to snap back uh, once the uh, action is done. So it's just that whole idea of it being able to do those five things. And as it mentions, the study of the physiology of muscles uh, include those groups, and you're going to see a lot of the exam not examples, but how that stuff works uh, in this lecture. Okay, and this is our, our main topic today, that nerve muscle relationship. In other words, how it, how it receives its message and what the processes that occur that get that muscle to fire, uh, to get the action done, whatever it's, it's going to be. Okay, there's two parts of this. Uh, part one is the somatic motor neurons. And that's, that's what this is over here. This is the part. Okay, these are the nerve cells. brain stem and spinal cord okay so that's the as the message comes from the brain goes down uh, the spinal cord uh, the somatic motor neurons are all those neurons and they're just right in a row and as I mentioned uh, and you can see the direction of the message here the previous neuron sends the message to this neuron and it will send the message on to the next neuron working the way down the spinal cord to the appropriate level and then out to wherever it needs to go and the out part that's the somatic muscle fiber These are nerve cells these axons and this right here as you can see here and this is in the axon right here where the message travels down uh, let's see whose axons lead To the muscle fiber no not fiber just to the muscle well no fiber is fine that's ultimately what it's what it's going to so that's the two parts and uh, we're going to talk about uh, those two things pretty extensively which again is why I wanted to kind of bring in some chapter 12 stuff to kind of set the table for what we're gonna be talking about All right, well, let's continue our talk. I'm going to space down here a little bit. The next thing that we need to understand is what a motor unit is. Okay, now a motor unit, uh, let me say it first, and then we'll 
then we'll talk about it. Uh, we're going to have these nerve fibers. Okay, and these nerve fibers are going to be, once they leave the spinal cord and they're headed out to the muscle fiber, uh, these motor units are, you've got this nerve fiber and eventually it branches out and connects to each of the muscle fibers. And that's, that's a muscle unit. So we're going to call this muscle uh, motor unit uh, nerve fiber. It stimulates. So that's when we say unit, we're talking about a group or a bundle. So you've got this nerve fiber and then it branches out to all these muscle fibers. Okay, and we're gonna see a picture of that here in just a few minutes, but that's called the motor unit. Okay, now when we talk about the little uh, outline format here, when we talk muscle fiber of a motor unit, and I'm going to space over just a bit to let you know that, that this part is underneath that muscle fiber of a, oh, I got a misspelled word there. Hope you caught that and spell it right on your, on, uh, in your notes. Okay, so these muscle fibers are dispersed. muscle and I mean one of the things that you have got to remember that if you think of like your your thigh muscle I mean it's it's uh, I mean you can envision kind of what a, uh, you know, maybe a ham looks like that kind of that big muscle um, but it's got a it's got just a, a bunch a bunch of individual smaller fibers that make up uh, that big muscle and uh, they're dispersed throughout the muscle Okay, they contract and space over here. They contract in unison. Okay, so you don't just have one part of the leg muscle, the thigh muscle, that uh, fires without the rest of them. So it all happens kind of in, in, in unison and that speaks of the speed Oh, it's three. That speaks of the speed of the, that this happens at. Uh, produces a weak signal over a large area. Because uh, that's that's all it needs. I mean, it doesn't need to be a. Doesn't have to be the radio on ten. Okay, the radio on two uh, is is strong enough to get the the action done. Plus, it would take energy, more energy, if it was a strong, stronger signal. One, two, three. See how I got that timed out? That's a strong teacher move, right there. Um, when a long-term signal is needed then we have multiple motor units working in tandem so we've got, if we have one motor unit uh, covering an area, or we have multiple motor motor units and we need a long-term signal, then they just work in tandem, like one will fire, then the other will fire. One will fire, then the other will fire. They just alternate back and forth to keep that, uh, uh, keep, that air, keep everything stimulated and the action to continue. Oh, I want that. One, two, three, boom. And last one for this section. Okay, and as we just kind of alluded to, it takes a 
motor units. Working in tandem. contraction so obviously we're not talking about the contractions affiliated with uh, uh, childbirth although that is what's happening uh, but when we say contraction we're just talking about the muscle tightening releasing tightening releasing and so just some facts about uh, motor units an average And again, the word average does not mean like middle of the road, it means typical. A typical motor unit um, controls 200 muscle fibers. Okay. And then a small motor unit. Controls three to six, and with and because of that, because we got it's a fine motor control. Fine motor control is needed. So we're thinking hands, eye, etc. That kind of stuff. Where you need, I mean, if you. If you need a fine control, like with your hands, and your and your eyes got to move in a, in a specific uh, pattern, then it's a small motor unit just covering, controlling a few muscle fibers to make sure that that precision is there. Uh, but when you have an idea, like with your leg or your bicep, uh, those you need a you need more power. You need more power than than control. Uh, so those are large units. And they control uh, a thousand. Muscle fibers. So like your your uh, you know just your bigger muscles, back muscles, biceps, uh, hamstring, that kind of stuff, all those things, they're controlled by a large motor unit which can control a you know a thousand muscle fibers, so more strength than precision. Okay, and now let's see how well I did because I try to time this out, not time, space this out to where uh, that would end right here. So let's just move this up here, right here. And so now we can kind of talk about this diagram. I like this. This is a, this diagram does well at showing the uh, how these. nerve fibers branch out into the individual muscle fibers uh, to fire and everything that we talk about in in the rest of this video is going to be talking about these connections right here to where the nerve fiber connects up with the uh, the muscle at the neuromuscular junction uh, and that message is going to go from the nerve fibers into that synaptic cleft, which is what's inside those little, little whitish circles there that I just circled, and then out into the muscle. And the rest is video, and it's just right over down here, and then we're going to go that way. It's about a look over, uh, 15, yeah, 15 step process to going from receiving the stimulus to the relaxation once it's once it's done but I mean it happens you know incredibly fast uh, as it has to, to to make it an effective one I mean put your hand on a burner you don't want to wait 
30 seconds to get a message hey take your hand off the burner uh, so it, but we know how quickly we all understand how quickly it happens but so it does show a good job about this branching off into the different muscle fibers but what it what I don't like about it is the fact that they use red and blue uh, the red and blue associate with the, the type of muscle tissue so I get that but when you first glance at this and when you see red and blue you think blood so it'd been nice if we could have picked different colors but we didn't so but it's just the idea of this branching out into all of the various uh, um, muscles so again when we, when we said motor unit we're talking about uh, this fiber here and then all the muscles that it connects to okay and so if it's a large motor unit there's going to be thousands of these uh, tissues and if it's an average one at 200 and if it's a small one just three to six excuse me three to six as we mentioned for that fine motor control all right so close this and we're going to move down here and I'm going to scoot this over just a little bit because I want to type right here so give me a box please move that over here and we're going to go muscle Stimulus to relaxation. And this is going to cover through four, I'll just put that, four major phases. Four major phases. And let's number them. We haven't numbered anything today. So we got one, the excitation. Anytime you see that word in this uh, description of this process, like over up here, uh, that simply means that it receives a stimulus and uh, causes the action. So it gets gets energized. It gets uh, it gets it receives energy. Okay. Part two is the conversion between. The excitation to contraction so it receives the stimulus and it in the process of the, of the part of that process where now the contraction begins to to build okay three the actual contraction itself and of course oh I didn't put my period in there and I didn't do it there either, so let's space those out. And then four, the relaxation. Or better said, the stoppage of the stimulus. All right, and so these 15 steps that we're going to go through are these four processes. Uh, the excitation, I think it has like nine and then, or, uh, yeah, then the excitation, the contraction has one or two steps. And the contraction is about five. And then the relaxation is like three uh, to get us to 15 steps. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to go look at each of the diagrams. And we're going to describe what happens. And I'll be typing below each of them, telling you what's going on. And... Uh, and so what will happen is when we look at these, um, you know, we're going to pause right here on the lecture and just kind of talk about classroom management. And this is, this actually is going to be for um, the, the bio, the, uh, not bio, the A&P Crowder people, because we do the, we do our practice questions and our, and those kind of stuff. Uh, it's the idea of, 
because we have labs all the way up to Thanksgiving, uh, one of the things we can talk about tomorrow, and here I'm, I'm saying it now in this video, and we're going to do it before class, so I, I'm going to stop right there because we'll talk about it in class long before you watch this, so there's no need to continue that thought. So, but we're going to type below these, uh, and when it comes to answering questions, and this is kind of what made me think of this, is we may have to do the questions on our own because we're going to have labs uh, each each time. And if we have questions and labs, uh, you guys will be there really, really late, uh, probably beyond uh, the classroom time, which which we don't want to we don't want to get in that process. Uh, so we have to do some of these because you do need to see the questions because probably what you're going to have to do is match up actions. Uh, not only label parts, but a match of actions with, with what you're seeing. So, but we'll figure all that out uh, together. So, let me slide this down here. And open up this first box here. Oh, you know what? I take that back. I got one more. I got, um, I got another diagram to go over. Yeah, this one right here. Okay, so let me blow this up a little bit here so you can kind of see everything. But this is a kind of an overview of what we're about to where we're about to see. Um, so we'll kind of do this now, um, kind of setting the stage, uh, and then we'll talk about each of the individual steps. Uh, but the process that your muscles go through to receive a stimulus, uh, this is the this is that axon, okay, that we talked about. Uh, in the introduction and this is the synaptic cleft and this is why I'm going to blow this up even more why I want to talk about this so we can kind of talk about some of these parts because we're going to mention them and again you don't you know, the, theoretically you don't know what they are and so this is this is what's going on the the nerve signal is coming down this axon and to the synaptic cleft and this is that neuromuscular junction that we saw. And what's happening is that the message is, is going to be received by the muscle. Uh, and this is, this is kind of what goes on. Okay, when the, when the nerve signal arrives, it signals the synaptic cleft to release calcium. Okay, and, uh, and that's the CA2. That's calcium. So that calcium enters the synaptic knob. Uh, which is the very end of those those uh, uh, at the bottom dendrite looking things but the synaptic cleft down there the synaptic knob and uh, you can see all these little orange things here no those aren't the candy orange slices those are mitochondria and you're going to see towards the end of this process that a lot of ANTP a lot of ANT a lot of ATP molecules get used for this process the whole day whole idea of oxidation and reduction, the whole idea of building molecules, breaking down molecules is going on. And so it's got to generate lots of ATP uh, in this process. And we know how... Mm -hmm. and we, <coughs> excuse me, we know how that happens from uh, previous lectures. But it's the whole idea the calcium gets deposited, new, uh, arrival of a new signal, and then these, these uh, molecules, uh, acetylcholine, we're going to call them ACHs, gets released. Now this is the part that, because we're dealing with muscles, the same thing happens each time. But if we were dealing with neurons to neuron transfer, transfer of signal, these would be neurotransmitters. And based on what needed to happen, uh, it would release different uh, neurotransmitters. But it's the idea of the neuro, the molecules, the ACHs, go across this membrane okay, and attach to these protein receptors that are in this membrane. And this is the sarcoloma, uh, which is shown here. But obviously, it's just a plasma membrane of some sort. Not of some sort, a plasma membrane. And these ACHs cross that membrane. And attach and you can all these little purple things here those are all these receptors in this membrane that is surrounding this muscle cell okay so when those ACHs cross over 
they attach themselves uh, to these proteins and when those proteins open that's when this sodium potassium action happens that I referred to earlier in other words the uh, the junction is resting at that negative 90 okay then those uh, sodiums come roaring in to increase that energy level from that negative 90 that positive 75 that I talked about earlier okay that, and that causes that allows the uh, signal to be sent on uh, to the next uh, portion. So the sodiums roar in, raise it up to positive 75, then the potassiums roar out, uh, lowering it back right, right back down to, to resting. And then, excuse me, and then the fifth part, once that happens, uh, and we're going to see this uh, in our step here, but once that part happens, all the channel, all the gates, all the gated ion channels nearby open up, and the same thing happens there. And we just and the, and the stimulus or the signal just spreads throughout the muscle tissue. So that's an overview of what we're about to see uh, in greater detail. So let's roll back down to our 62 there, and now we will come down here. Ooh, excuse me. Let's put no right there is good enough. Now I can give me that text box. And we'll put that right there. And let's blow these up some more so you can see all that. All that writing. And for the third time, text box. And I gotta turn the page here. And again, it's a 15 step process. And we're just going to walk through it, and when we get to 15, we'll be done for the day. And, but we're already at 47. I told my wife this would be about a 45 to, this, to an hour long, so I'm going to be way wrong on that, too, by just let you know how much more time we've got. we got at least another half an hour. All right, so in steps one and two, what happens, uh, as you can see, okay, a new... Signal arrives. Uh, this stimulates the ACH uh, to release. Okay. Releases across. The synaptic cleft. Okay, and so that's that's steps one and two. So the new signal arrives. That's step one, and then the ACH releases and goes across the synaptic cleft. Now that cleft is just simply a, refer, a reference to this. There's a space between this and this, and that's the, the synaptic cleft. Okay, steps three and four. So a new text box here. Put that bad boy right there. Uh, two, two ACHs molecules bind run to the uh, um, receptor. And that opens, as we saw earlier, the, and I'm going to type the name out. You know how I like to do the, the chemical symbol plus the uh, proper sign thing where I um, close it out, get the pen, put the plus sign, and it just take too long. Potassium channels. And then you can see here that they bind to the receptor. And then when that happens, that opens it up and allows the sodium to come roaring in. Remember, we're going from negative 90 to a positive 75. And when that happens, uh, that allows the stimulus to 
or that causes it to fire, stimulus is signal on, and then once the potassiums come roaring out, that lowers it back down to that resting uh, potential number. Yeah, so let me just put that on here. Because I have it in my notes here. So when this happens, again, let me get the pen. If I do this energy level, okay, we're at negative 90. Okay, but well when the sodium comes roaring in, we go up to that plus 75. Okay, and that fires a signal on. That's supposed to be a 5. And then the potassiums roar out, and we go back down to that 90. Okay, sliding over here to steps 5, 6, and 7. Lower that before we can see that. Give me a text box here, please. Put that right here. And again, this is that same picture we saw earlier. So, the change in energy allows the nearby channels to open. Allowing the signal to spread to other muscle fiber. So that's that process. And we're getting ready to see over here how that works. Uh, but when this thing's open up, again, it allows it to happen. But we're going to see over here. So give me a text box over here. Put that right there, and on step six and seven. So now we're entering the phase to where we're not just receiving the signal. Now we receive the signal, and it's beginning to start that process of causing an action. All right, so. The action potential spreads the T two bills, and you can see that right in here. So it, this action potential leaves this area uh, where the the message is being sent across, and goes down in here. And this tubule allows it to travel down and spread out into the other areas. <laughs> And what else do I want to say there? Uh, okay. Opens calcium channel. And calcium. cytosol over the cytoplasm kind of the stuff right there so that is six and seven and you can see the calcium entering uh, the area right there of the cell okay and now the the fun really begins to happen and again what you're going to see now is just part of the amazing process that our that our body does i mean what what we're going to what we're going to talk about now is is just phenomenal how sophisticated how efficient our bodies work and we we don't do anything about it so look just think about how cool uh, this factor is let me get a text box here but I'll be sharing the notes with you but also just just talking about it as well and just the awesomeness of it all right so the calcium attaches T2 
to the, the, the thin filaments. And more importantly, it attaches to this trypsomycin, tropsomycin. Okay, and when that does, what that does is it causes a change in the structure to where they contract, okay, and when they contract and move upwards, you know, or pinch together, okay, they open up these active sites. Okay, active sites, and then the cool stuff really begins to happen. But let me get that down first. Changes the shape of the fiber, and yeah. Exposes the active sites, and when it does that, it allows this bridge, and we're going to talk about it over there in 1011. But it allows this bridge, okay, this cool factor of this bridge, this myosin bridge, uh, and that's what allows the muscle then uh, to fire. And as long as, and I'll just say it now, but we'll type it, and as long as the action needs to continue. You keep going through this process of the myosin attaching to the active site and then pulling back. Attach, pull back, attach, pull back, as long as the stimulus uh, or the action is needed. Uh, but again, finishing up my thoughts here. Yeah, that is, that is the finish. So pull this over here. Uh, text box. And this is step, this looks different up here. The way the, the PowerPoint slide was set up, it didn't allow me to bring in the picture with the title. So I just typed them up there for you. But steps 10 and 11, steps 12 and 13, uh, 14, 15 over there. All right, but we're on 10 and 11. Um, okay, so now we've gone from uh, the receiving of the signal, which is the excitement portion, portion and the, the crossover between receiving the signal and things starting to happen. And now we're just into the contraction uh, part of it is, okay, where the muscle starts to act and to, and to, uh, to move. Okay. An ATP molecule. Oh, excuse me, is used uh, to the, the myosin, and the myosin is this little purple thing here, and what happens is that it's normally in this position here, but the ATP is used, so they, they break off one of the phosphates, energy is released, Again, back to chemistry again. That's why that first chapter, that chapter two, is so important. Okay, it, and it causes it to extend forward. Causing it to extend forward and connecting okay, with the active site, as you can see right here. Next, we get an active site forming a bridge. Causes the muscle to contract. Okay, so the APC comes in. One of the phosphates is broken off, energy is released. That gives this myosin their energy to, to extend forward, connect to the active site, and now that bridge is formed, and now the muscle begins uh, to fire. Okay, creating that, creating that bridge. Uh, and then, as you can see, let me slide this over just a bit here. 
in 12 and 13. Twelve and thirteen. Oh, I didn't grab it. Okay, so this process continues long as it's needed. That's called a power stroke. And that's called a power stroke. So, um, and this happens, you can do it like five times in a second, so it's a pretty quick uh, process. Uh, but again, just altering that shape, uh, exposing those active sites, and as long as the process is needed, as long as the action is needed, so like if you're walking around the mall, this is going to be happening a bunch, you know, as long as you're walking around. But if you stop and sit down, okay, then you no longer need that action, and therefore it stops. And to stop, that's our next uh, uh, set and our last two. Little text box. Move this over. When action is no longer needed, the nerve fiber quits firing. Okay, and when that happens, the ACH. is released and broken down and so the signal stops okay the action is no longer needed okay on these protein receptors the ACH is released and then an, an enzyme protein comes along and just basically dissolves it up so it's kind of like a lysosome type vesicle uh, breaking that breaking it down because as long as that stuff is floating out there, you have a chance to bind to that, which is going to continue uh, firing. And you don't want your leg muscles firing, you know, when you're just sitting down and don't need to move, or your arm muscles. Okay. And so those little twitches that, that your body can do for once in a while, that's when this kind of stuff is happening when it doesn't really need uh, to happen. Kind of a kind of a thing. And. That stops the stimulus okay so there you go that's a look at uh, this process I don't think there's anything else over there let's take a quick peek not we're blank there okay so that is a, a, a pretty good look at the process that your cells your muscle uh, cells go through in order to, to fire and we come back next time and when we talk about skeletal muscle cardiac muscle, smooth muscle. This is the process that's going to be going on to get that stuff uh, happening. And, uh, and now you have a good understanding of what's going on. So when we talk about what's happening, you'll know that this happened first, and then we see the action as it's going on from there. So an hour four. So I guess I was more right the first time than I, than I was wrong, which is, you know, me, it's usually the case I'm usually right. No, 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 no. You know better than that. So, hey, thank you again uh, for being here, for uh, taking this on, taking this up, and, and, and watching this and enjoying this. And, and as always, man, I hope you're in a good place. Hope you're in a good spot mentally, physically, uh, emotionally. Hope everything is going well with you. Uh, you know, for, for A&P Crowder students, we're reaching the end. I mean, you're going to watch this right before Thanksgiving. Is that right? I have to look at that, but it's well. No, if this week is nine, yeah, it's the the first. So you'll watch this next week, uh, which will be in at fourteen. No, tomorrow's the second, so you'll watch it on the ninth and the tenth, 
in that in that ballpark. And so then we have a week in between, uh, just labs. So there's probably a test in there or two. Um, and then we get into Thanksgiving break. And then we come back. Uh, it's just cellular respiration and uh, blood. And then boom, done. Put it in the books. First of December. So roughly a month from now. Starting tomorrow. Finals will start a month from a month from tomorrow. <laughs> Man, we guys got a lot to do, I'm sure. But hey, let's get out of here. It's 1201. It's lunchtime. What am I going to have? Ooh, well, I know there's some there's some stuff from Friday night when we had some beef chips, gravy, little mashed potatoes. I know I eat a lot of red meat, but I like me some potatoes too. And then it's every time I mention it. But anyway, that's enough about that. Hey, let's get out of here. Thank you again. And until next time, we will say uh, goodbye.